Hey there, Ride the Car Guy here, and today let's diagnose the VDC slip and ABS light on a 2004 Nissan Titan. So last year, out of nowhere, my ABS engaged and started just losing its mind, and then I got an ABS VDC and slip light. Now that one I diagnosed to a rear wheel speed sensor that uh, was melting against an aftermarket exhaust that someone put on here. You can find that video in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Then it happened again this year. Everything started freaking out and all three lights lit up. I'd already remediated the one in the rear, so I figured it was something else. I grabbed a scanner, I plugged it in, and it turns out that the front left wheel speed sensor is now having an issue. I came across this trouble code, which is the open circuit for the front left sensor. I verified it, I went into my live data, and then I drove the truck a little bit, and sure enough, all of the other sensors were having readings. This one read zero. So I said, screw it, and I bought the other three sensors, and I replaced all of the sensors and said, let's just start from scratch. And unfortunately, that didn't fix it. So I think there might be an issue between where you plug in the sensor and your ABS control box up top. So that's where we're gonna start today, but if you don't have a scanner that scans these, um, it's a bit of a pain in the butt, but the easiest thing to do is on these Titans, the sensors on the front are actually interchangeable to the left and right. So it's, you know, you have to go through it and pull it off, but you can take your bad sensor or what you think is your bad sensor, throw it on the other side, swap it and see if the error follows that change. So for instance, I'm getting a front left error. If I swap them and drive it and I get a front right error, then you know it's the sensor because that's the only thing that you changed. But for me, the likelihood that a brand new sensor is not working at all out of the box is kind of unlikely. So unfortunately, I think that there's an issue between where we plug in the sensor and where it ends up in the ABS control box. So we're gonna start diagnosing that by checking continuity. To accomplish this, we wanna follow back our sensor cable and it goes up to this little connector here and this will pop off of your, um, your sort of frame there and then you just wanna disconnect it by clicking this little connector, pushing down and pulling out. And I fashioned up this thing. This is my probe from my multimeter right here. And I have a little alligator clip going into this guy. This is a tiny little connector, a little probe that I'm gonna slide into that. But however you can get it to work, we wanna go ahead and slide this in here. I'll slide into the first one, sort of push it in, make sure it sits right there. All right, then we're gonna go up go to the block, pull off the connector, and hit the pin that it's supposed to be connected to. All right, before you start doing this, you have to make sure your negative battery cable is disconnected. Now, I pulled the top of the airbox cover off just so you can see that's not required. But again, once your negative battery cable is disconnected, you just have to push that little safety clip in that's above that orange lever, and then just pull up on that lever, and it'll kind of pull itself out. There you go. Once it's all the way in the up position, you should be able to wiggle it out go. Perfect. I have my multimeter in continuity mode, so if I touch the two together, it should beep like that. And I'll put the diagram on the screen, but the front left is going to be these two pins right here. Hopefully you can see that. So if I take my probe and I touch this pin, this is number, I think it's 45. If I touch it, should beep. Yes, it does. All right. So we know that that pin is good and that meets it down there at the connector. Now I'm gonna go move my probe to the other one and that should meet us here at 46. So all I'm doing is taking the little connector out and then just pushing it in the other side. So now that should go here. Oh, uh-oh. It does not, huh. Okay, let me move it around a little bit. Wow, no, it's not connected at all. So that's wonderful. I think we may have found the problem here. So this runs down into a loom, goes all over the place, but luckily this is a really short run. It goes from here, it runs down, goes around the air box, and then down into the wheel well. Okay, so here's what we wanna do. Here's our connector. Up top is the main loom. It goes, obviously it follows up here. And if you go back here, you'll see that it's connected and out. Well, actually, hold on. Look at this. If I pull back my wheel well cover, you'll see the loom is torn and there's only one wire in there. Let me peel it back. Oh, and look at that. There's our wire. That's wonderful. That sounded like I was joking. That actually is really wonderful because the fact that it's down here when there's only two wires and not up there somewhere in the big fat harness, it actually makes me quite pleased. So I'm going to disconnect uh, both of the little clips holding this on and we're gonna get both ends of this and we're gonna connect it back up and see if we have continuity. 
So I'm going to go grab one of those solder connectors that I have, get, do a nice clean cut, lay them over, and then we're done. And then test again. This one, this one's also damaged actually. So I'm probably just going to do both. I must have hit it with something or actually I don't know, you know, who knows what happened, but I'm going to cut both of them, connect both of them, and then we should be good to go. All right, guys, I promise you I'm not making this up. I just went to grab my heat gun to go do the soldering and look at this. <laughs> so now I got to go fix this real quick and then I can go and uh, do this. I like to slide this down. In fact, I'm going to unravel this once or twice to get some more length here. There we go. So I'm going to slide this down here. There we go. And then kind of get them kind of twisted together just a little bit. All right, slide this back over. There we go. Make sure that the little waterproof bands are all on both sides and then hit it with some heat. All right. I'm gonna let that cool down. Then I'm gonna cut this and do this one. So I'm gonna cut precisely where it's damaged, use that as my starting point, and then come in and do the exact same procedure. All right, so now I'm gonna go retest continuity. These feel good, feel pretty tight. And then uh, if we have continuity, I'm pretty confident about reconnecting everything, buttoning it all up, and then going to drive it and see if we can get this sucker to reset. All right, I have it back in continuity mode. So now I'm gonna go hit the first pin. I'm going to the one that I cut and redid. So let's see how that goes. Very good. Let's switch it over. This is the one that was broken. So here we go. Nice. That is the sound of victory. So now I'm just gonna recase this in a little bit more loom, then button everything up and we can take this thing for a spin and see if those lights turn off for us. All right, there's our lights. So we're just gonna go out, drive this thing for a little bit and hope those things turn off. All right, I was driving for less than five minutes. I backed out of my driveway and turned on one road and those suckers turned off. So I am so pleased. All right, let's go back and debrief. Well, I am incredibly pleased with that result. I barely drove 500 yards before those lights switched off and now we can use four wheel drive. That is one of the big issues here is that these are all electronic switching for their four wheel drive systems. So if they don't have all the wheel speed sensors working, it just literally won't let you shift into four wheel, which is pretty obnoxious. If you run into a problem like this and you run your scans and all the wheel speed sensors are okay, really the only next thing you'd wanna look at is your ABS control. The Xterra Frontier and Pathfinder are all designed this way. So if you're having this issue, it should work on all those vehicles in addition to the Titan. If you have any questions about this process or really anything in general, head down to the comments and ask away. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, scroll down, click that like button. If I helped you save a lot of time or money, maybe say thanks. Scroll down, click that thanks button. Subscribe for more content like this and we'll see you in the next one.